Morning dogs. Well, it's not even morning, actually. I think it's almost noon. Thank you to AG1 for sponsoring today's video. <laughs> This weather is just crazy. I don't need this coat at all. It's gotta be, I don't know, 55 degrees out here, I'm thinking. It's obviously sunny. The wind is ripping. Get her. You just, you don't listen. You're supposed to do that on command, even though I never trained you. The dirt is dry on top anyway. There you can see where the dogs are tearing it up. It's wet underneath. We definitely still have some frost in the ground, but an unseasonably low amount for this time of year. Even the cats are coming out to check out the fields. Oh yeah, you like that? Let's give them a pet. Nope, we're gonna run away. I'm a good guy. Ice fishing is really popular here where we're at. In all of Minnesota, really. But normally this time of year, early March, there's like three feet of ice on the lakes. And right now I'm being told there's six, maybe eight inches. And even all the ice and snow in the shaded part of the yard here is gone now. Everything is drying up quickly. It's a Sunday afternoon right now. I just got back from Houston, Texas. I was down at Commodity Classic. Spent a lot of time in the Farmer's Business Network booth, which I've done a lot of business with them over the past several years. They've always been very supportive of this channel and what we're doing here. So if you're a farmer, the membership is completely free. It doesn't cost you anything to go online, check out their site, compare some prices. They've got great deals on chemical and all kinds of in-season inputs. They've got seed, health insurance, financing, you name it, they've got a ton of stuff there. It's colder in this shop than it is outside. I had a fun time down there. I ended up talking to, I'm pretty sure it was 4,862 people that I've never spoken to before. But it was a lot of people that were just great to talk to. I met a lot of good people, got a lot of really good Honestly humbling compliments from people who love what we're doing here with the channel and and um, what we've always done and it really was a humbling reminder of why I started this channel so I just wanted to tell you guys thank you as well and just thank you for being here and supporting the channel and watching the videos. I'll get to work now. It feels like it's been about two weeks since I finally hooked this thing up and mostly just blew gravel all over the yard because we had eight inches of snow with soft gravel underneath it. But now I'm thinking it needs to come off even though it's the beginning of March and I'm positive we're gonna get a bunch more snow, I think I should take this off, put the gravel blade on, try to level the yard out now while it's dry. But I don't remember, I can't think right now where that blade is at. So I'll go find it. Not there. There we go. Ah, yes, right where I left it. Man, that wind is gonna get real annoying real quickly. Just in case I don't actually end up using this thing again, I'm gonna put a little something on the chain. That way it doesn't sit there dry for eight months. If you watch the video where I hooked this up, you know that that wasn't fun. It should come off easier. Oh yeah, yeah, that'll come off easy. But. I've decided to run it a little bit before I unhook it. <laughs> Just cause. Re-oil everything. I don't know. No reason. under that I won't leave it sitting on the ground you gotta raise it up though I made a big mistake there are a couple things in life that you never want to step in one of them was that you come on break loose go come on no I think I need more under the front jack gotta be careful there 
right where I left that. Ah. That wasn't working either. I think the ground is just too unlevel right here. I like it because it's tucked behind on the north side of the shed, but it just doesn't seem to work. A lot more level right here. Come on. I'm kind of on there, but it's not really set all the way down in there, so I'm going to get it to gravel. Well, none of those tracks were there when I started, so even though we've been crazy dry, you can see just how wet everything is underneath when that frost starts coming out there. It's just a mess. Well, maybe it is in on the bottom. There we go. Just this a bit, but not with it in the air. Look at that. We are leveling <laughs> spring type of things. Hey, by the way, that dryer is still for sale. Asking 75 grand, 24 foot souk up stacker, 2010, three phase LP. Email me, we'll help you load it. It would make a great conversation piece for your living room. You could put it in there and tell everybody that it's an official prop from the Millennial Farmer movie set. I think backblading this is doing the best. If I go forward, it cuts in too deep. Right now, I just need to level off the edges. That's a vast, a vast, a large, a great improvement. Very nice getting kind of dark there to the north haven't had skies that look like that for quite a while maybe we won't get snow we'll just get 60 degree rain at this point that'd be a lot better I'm gonna jump out go mix myself some AG1 it's obviously that time of year where the weather's changing a lot you never know if it's gonna be 100 mile an hour winds it's gonna be dry wet cold hot humid you don't know what you're gonna get I think this is the time of year when it's the most important to really support your whole foundational nutrition. AG1 helps me with my immune system, my mental and physical health, and it's as simple as putting one scoop in here, mixing up some water. And yes, of course, it's a science-driven formulation made up of micronutrients, phytonutrients, and essential symbiotics. But I don't know what any of that means. I just know it's good for me. And it tastes good. And it helps maintain healthy aging, which is why I, the actor who plays the millennial farmer, am able to look like a millennial when we all know that I am actually much, much older than the actual farmer. So to try some for yourself, all you gotta do is go to drinkag1.com slash millennial farmer or new right now, you can scan the QR code that's actually on your screen. And if you do that, you're gonna be able to get yourself an entire free welcome kit, which includes a canister, the shaker, and an entire year's supply worth of vitamin D3 and K2 with 10 free extra travel packs of AG1. Thank you again to AG1 for sponsoring today's video. Can you guys see the difference in here where I've gone versus where these six inch truck ruts are? I'm not really sure if the camera picks it up or not, but there seems to be more ruts on this side than there are over here. You can tell because of the way it is. Oh, would you look at that. It's actually gotten pretty dark in the west just now with a killer south wind. I should maybe check radar. Either way, this tractor needs a bath, so I think I'm actually going to park it on the concrete pad and leave it outside. Well, there's no rain near us, but there is some snow out in the Dakotas. Nice. 
final thing for Sunday now is I want to get this truck loaded up so Scott can take off with it in the morning. And then I got two other trucks to go grab from a couple different shops tomorrow so we can keep them moving. And hopefully the yard stays dry so things don't continue to get this messy. Tire check. the tarp in here because of the extreme winds outside just make sure everything looks good inside there I never really thought I'd use these windows I kind of thought they were a silly idea but they're nice That's one truck ready for tomorrow. The other two had a couple minor mechanical issues that are fixed now. I just need to go pick them up. And since it's Sunday, I'm not going to pick them up today. But I am going to call it a day and go do the family thing on Sunday night here. And I'll see you in the morning. All right. Good morning, dogs. Do dogs. The morning wrestling and stretching. Get after her. Come on, go ahead. Scott should be back any minute with the first load of the day. We will load him up and then he's gonna drop me off at one of the truck shops on the way back down. And I'll bring that other truck home, load it. Oh, we got a mess over there. Don't worry about the mess. I'll let you speculate. It's handled. While I wait for Scott, I'm gonna walk back here behind the yard where we've got the Mendeco storm parked and see how muddy it is or not. And listen to Joe Vaklovic get a little grain marketing information. So it's relatively dry. It's frozen good right now. So I'm actually thinking about hooking that up because we've got a little bit of land that it wouldn't hurt to take that over maybe next week, which would seem a little bit ridiculous, but we got some actually wheat straw that didn't get tilled last year that I wouldn't mind just running it over at sort of a low angle just to chew some of that stuff up before we get back to plant it a few weeks later. But I wasn't thinking very much ahead and I didn't plug the tractor in last night and it's like 18 degrees out right now. Probably not gonna like that very much. In 2023, a lot of farmers um, were able to trigger indemnity payments. Well, there we go. Scott's back, so I'm not gonna fire that truck right now. Where are you taking the fake duck? Shorts? Oof. I'll have you take me to Michael's on the way down. I'll bring that other one back. She's full. He left without me. Luckily, I'll be able to intercept him over here. They also put a gear reduction starter in this, so let's see what it... Ooh, she's cold. Come on, baby. She's firing. Real cold. Ooh, look at that. That looks expensive. I guess I'll find out. Well, the good news is we got this truck back. The bad news is the blower motor's not working, so there's no heat in it. We just had the blower motor fixed in the other Kenworth. Exact same, it's for sure the blower motor. So I'm gonna load it up and have Scott meet me at the same truck shop on the way back home, but I'm gonna load it out of a different bin because we also plugged this same conveyor system out of the new bin for a third time. So we're gonna go out of a back bin. I did a little bit of searching around and I could not figure out on this other deal. Auger? Conveyor. Grain pump. Whatever you want to call it. It's not plugged tight because I got it shut down in time. I could tell what was happening. Or I got everything closed down but it tripped something on the motors and I can't find a reset on the motors themselves and I can't find one in the box. So somewhere there's a 
breaker or something that I'm missing. I flipped every breaker on this end that would be affiliated with it. And I can get the bin motor to turn on, but it's the actual conveyor that won't. Now most of the stuff sitting over in this little area here is way over my head. But I know a lot of it goes there. Never pretended to be an electrician before. I'm not going to do it today with those big panels. Well, this day did not take very long to kind of turn to crap. When my hands warm up enough, I'll call an electrician. See if we can figure it out. Luckily, Mike's little truck shop, where I'm going back to, is less than 10 miles straight south of us, actually directly on the way to the ethanol plant. So I'm not going out of the way at all. That's why I loaded the truck. And yeah, I could change the blower motor myself, but it's going to take them two hours. They're going to get it done right. It'd probably take me all day and I'd do something wrong. I'd probably mess it up. So we got plenty of other things going on. I'll work on other things while they fix the heat for me. Right back where she was parked. I got a couple things to do quick in the shop and then Becky's gonna take me to the other truck shop where the Peterbilt is at and then we'll bring that one home and hopefully have two functioning trucks that are working. Now this truck here had a nasty air leak that it developed up underneath the cab there. Kind of tucked back in there. Jeez, come on. This one's never done this. <sighs> well, as I was saying, it had an air leak we couldn't get to. It was a goofy fitting that we didn't have. Actually, the truck shop didn't have it either, but we had them fix it because we couldn't get the parts. And now it doesn't start. That is the first time this truck has ever done that to me. What a day. Well, they don't have a jumper pack, so they're just gonna hook it to a charger. Becky's gonna come back and get me. This is the most annoying day I've had in a long time. We just don't have, we don't have any guys around this time of year, so at least Scott's getting some stuff hauled. Since I don't have any trucks now, because I have two that are still at the shop, and Scott's gone with the third one, we're gonna hope that this beast will fire up. But it's cold, this tractor's not plugged in. This one usually does pretty well. <laughs> Nothing to it. Never mind. Scott's back, so we got a truck now. We may as well go right in there. And the truck shop called and they found a jumper pack. And they got the truck running. I've been home for five minutes. I guess it's all good news, it's just ironically timed. So we had Luke up there checking on things just to make sure the corn was flowing good. I've got it running wide open now, which I don't really trust, so I'm gonna close it down some. Because I think maybe it's possible that the transition going into the leg, after all this, maybe there's some something weird is happening in there. All right, that's all going good. Scott's out of here with a full truck. The issue with that bin is definitely not, it's not the bin, it's not the unload, and it's not the conveyor. It's, uh, I think it's in the transition or the way that the grain flows through the transition getting into the leg. There's something weird going on there, but anyway, we got it going again. I'm just gonna have to not run it as fast. But ultimately, it should be able to take that wide open because it's a 6,000 bushel per hour conveyor and a 7,000 bushel per hour leg. So there shouldn't be a problem there. We're gonna have to figure out, we gotta open up something or reshape something, I'm thinking. And as long as I got this grain cart out and I don't have a truck here yet, we are gonna open up this side draw on this bin, try to fill the grain cart with it because I've never used this side draw yet and I may as well get used to that. Luke's 
just gonna stick around for five minutes and help me load this thing. We got some in there now. I feel like we may as well get enough for a enough for a semi load. She's full. So now I got my side draw 101 class, which was very complicated. You have to open it and then close it before you put corn on the ground. So that's the plan. We're gonna plan on opening up that transition opening that transition up so the corn can flow a lot better so that we don't have any pinch points down in there. For now, I'm gonna see if Becky will take me up to get that truck that we already tried to get. The second one we tried to get, not the first one. Action. It's like deja vu. She's running. And she needs fuel. I did just get a fantastic phone call you guys are never gonna believe it. Jim is coming back tomorrow. Jim's gonna come out and run this truck for us and this truck's not gonna break down and it's gonna go swimmingly, dare I say, tomorrow. So I haven't seen Jim for probably a month, but I know he's feeling a lot better. Um, we'll see if I'll get him on, on video in the next video or not. We'll see how he's feeling first, but he wants to come out, get out of the house and start doing something. So Jim's coming back. I'll probably do Jim a favor and wash his windows. These are almost so bad that I wouldn't even drive with them like this. I haven't done this for a while. I did it. Hold that up before I catch something with it. It was bad enough that that made more sense than glass cleaner or a squeegee. There was stuff built up on the wipers and everything. Jim's chariot is ready. I even backed it in for him and everything. We had our skid loader up at the John Deere dealer getting serviced. Now that's ready. I really hope I don't get there and it doesn't start or something doesn't work. All right, fine. So one of those tractors in frame right now is our new planter tractor. Any guesses? Any at all? Nothing? No guesses? I guess it's not new, but it's new to us. Also, just fun to note, we have a new, an actual new planter on its way here right now. It was actually just down at Commodity Classic, so I'm, uh, it's coming right from Commodity Classic. It was in the show down there. It's coming right from there up to here, getting hooked to that tra tractor. They're gonna make sure everything is solid. Then it's coming out to the farm. Hopefully we'll have it later this week. All right, I'm out. Thank you guys. We'll, uh, you know, we'll be seeing you. Talk to you later. Sayonara. Toodles.